Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Thursday, October 24th for us. Uh, it's in the morning, what, 9.15 in the morning yeah. here. But uh, we're going to head around the world. Uh, and it is uh, late it's evening. Late. The Reverend Roy Askins, <laughs> Communication Manager for Asia for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, joining us uh, today. Thank you so much for being our guest today, Pastor Askins. Thank you, Andy and Sarah, for having me. It's great to be here. Tell us about where you serve and the, and the nature of your work as Communication Manager for Asia. Actually, before I dive into that, I want to just say real quick, I was listening to the previous segment about Christian Friends of New America, and I can't tell you, as someone who's lived overseas, having an agency like that that's willing to welcome you, especially when you can't speak the language and there's all these different cultural things, that's really great. And I really want to encourage people to take a look at that because as somebody who's lived in that circumstance, it can be incredibly frustrating at times. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to hear about the work that they're doing. Thanks. Thanks. And, and something yeah. is, you know, that we take for granted, like learning how to drive. Yeah. Yeah. In a yeah. different learning culture. Learning English. <laughs> right. 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 All right, those things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or what a trivia night is. I mean, uh, yeah. who would yeah. have ever right. thought like, you know, that for us, this is just, oh, it's trivia, you know, whereas for these, for, for international people, you know, we, we come to Taiwan and, and, or even, even like in Hong Kong, for instance, we lived in Hong Kong for a couple of years and just like how close people, how comfortable people are being like right up in your space. And you're just so <laughs> uncomfortable because you're all pushed together in a tight little train and it's just, you know, the way it is. And, uh, and so having somebody that in an organization like that, that not only helps you adjust, but then connects you to the church is absolutely incredible and, uh, to be commended. So it was really a, a great segment and, uh, really encouraged by their work. That's wonderful. So tell us about, uh, about where you serve, what you get to do. Sure. So I'm in Taiwan. I live in Taiwan, but I serve the entire Asia region. So the Asia region includes everything from Japan all the way down through, uh, Taiwan, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, and then all the way over to India and everything in between. So <laughs> it's uh, the largest region of international work and covers about uh, about not quite half the world's population. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities here for sharing the gospel. My work in particular is related to communications. So I, I kind of have two realms that I work in. Uh, a lot of my work is actually um, keeping people in the U.S. notified and aware of what's going on in the Asia region. So I travel, collect stories, collect pictures, collect videos, um, do podcasts. In fact, I do a lot of podcasts, and I'm I'm not used to being on this end of the microphone. So <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Of, it is. It is like it's like I want to ask the question. You know? <laughs> Not so, this time. <laughs> uh, doing podcasts, you know, collecting these kinds of stories that I then share via the international website. Uh, if I can do a shameless plug here, international.lcms.org, all of that stuff is shared there. In fact, you can see news not just from Asia, but in fact, all over the world there on the international website. So, mm -hmm. my job as communications man on, manager on the one hand is to keep people aware of what's going on out here in Asia. Um, and then I also support communications projects uh, in the region itself. So um, one of the projects we have going on is working with Dr. Paul and Pastor Wu here in Taiwan to put together a Chinese podcast. So they have already, we've actually already gone through and, and they've taught for about 30 minutes, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes on each of the Ten Commandments in Mandarin Chinese. And we are actually going to be able to put this on a website uh, that is accessible all over the world. Uh, no matter where you are at in the world, you'll be able to go to this website and see and listen, uh, not see, but listen to instruction on the small catechism in Mandarin. And our hope is eventually to get to the point where we have the whole catechism, but then also uh, do, you know, scriptures or uh, sermon preparation, uh, these types of things, and then connect the people who are listening to this to faithful Lutheran congregations where they can go and hear more. And receive more instruction. So my work uh, encompasses kind of both realms, working, sharing news back here in the U.S., but then also supporting our partners and the work that they're doing out here in the, in the region. That is some really incredible, really incredible things happening, uh, especially with Dr. Paul and, and Pastor Wu. That's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. You talk about uh, serving, serving all of Asia. Um, that is a really 
that's a very large uh just half the world yeah it's fine um just that's a, <laughs> a lot of people and it's a lot of cultures though too yeah. um and and the perspective of lutheranism or christianity in general is very i'm i'm assuming it's very different depending on yes. on where you are in that region what is is there a common perception of lutheranism or, or what is that that range of of perception of lutheranism across the areas that you serve yeah you know it's it's vast because you go from places where lutheranism has been um relatively, of course, long established. Mm -hmm. The places like India where, you know, we've been working since 1894 and they have had a church body, uh, established church body since the 40s or 50s. All the way to places like um, uh, like Cambodia where we've worked for a long time but has only recently reformed their church body or even in Sri Lanka where the church body kind of, uh, fell apart to some degree and has just recently been reformed and they're kind of rediscovering what it means to be Lutheran. Um, so the range of what it means to be Lutheran is, is vast and different, similar to, in some ways, and reflective of kind of the range you see in the, U in the U.S. too. Mm -hmm. um, but it does, uh, there are, of course, cultural variations. But one of the most delightful things that we have seen is the desire to, um, to be, especially for Asians, the desire to be part of something bigger than themselves, right? So they're not looking to establish a you know, Bangladesh Lutheran Church or a Cambodia Lutheran Church that's unique and distinct from everything else. They very much want to be part of the broader church, the bigger church. And a part of this uh, is doing things like uh, like hymnals. We've got these mm -hmm. hymnals that we're translating hymnals into Chinese and Indonesian. Uh, we're, we have potential projects in, uh, in a couple other languages that we're investigating as well. And these are actually requests of the church to do this because they see in this hymnal, in this liturgy, in this hymnody, they see the history of the church, right? This is not just the music of, you know, one particular church of one particular era, but the music of all the church throughout all time. And, and this is not just the worship of one particular church body, but it is the worship of all the churches throughout Christianity, all, throughout the history of Christianity, all together. And they love and they cherish and desire this opportunity to participate in this history. And so we're delighted to be able to participate in these translations and help them give them this gift of hymnals uh, and, and help them receive this. It's really exciting. That is, that's outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, other places where you've seen the uh, Lutherans making a difference and, and the gospel being proclaimed in these various cultures. Well, the other place I really want to highlight is actually some work going on in Indonesia. Um, we have a, a family that just recently got placed uh, in Indonesia. They are, I think, about four months into their language training. Uh, Matthew Wood, Pastor Matthew Wood and his family uh, just recently placed there. Uh, I just visited them, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago. And, uh, and to see how they're doing and to, and to kind of to collect a story about their transition into Indonesia. And I was impressed. Uh, I, I've studied just a smattering of Mandarin, but my wife and children have spent over a year studying Mandarin, and they're doing really, really well. Uh, but the, it took a long time with Mandarin. But the woods have just really taken to the Indonesian. And when I arrived, he was chatting with the taxi driver and everything in Bahasa Indonesia. That's the la Indonesian language. And it was just really, really neat to see how well they've, they've adapted. But he was telling me recently about uh, these 10 new congregations that joined the church body we work with in Indonesia. So let me give you a little bit of background here on this church body in Indonesia for the last I, I want to say five five or ten years, we've been working with the Indonesian Christian Lutheran Church, the GKLI. Now, we're not formally in fellowship. They have some theological issues that they're working through before we can formally declare fellowship. But it's amazing to see the progress. I mean, they made a pretty significant turnaround uh, when we started working with them from a fairly significant theological problem and uh, and are making great strides in correcting this. It was really great to see. But then over the years, we've worked with them and encouraged them. We translated the, the Book of Concord into, into Bahasa Indonesia and have been giving away copy after copy of this. And it's great to see how they're being strengthened and, and clinging to this uh, scriptures and the confessions. Well, there were 10 congregations that were part of a different church body that ended up having to leave over theological issues. Uh, but in Indonesia, in order to be a legal congregation, you actually have to be part of a church body, a legally registered church body. And so this these 10 congregations on this island off the, 
the west side of Sumatra, these congregations were looking for a faithful Lutheran church body to join. And they reached out to the GKLI, uh, our, the church we work with in Indonesia, and asked if they could join. So the leaders of the GKLI went out and met with them. They traveled 300 miles, which for us doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're traveling over really horrible roads and taking ferries that may or may not actually get you from one coast to the other coast without sinking, uh, and just all of the trials and struggles that go along with driving a car in Indonesia, uh, making that trip is absolutely incredible. So the, the, the GKLI went and visited and then eventually welcomed these 10 congregations into the, the GKLI, into their church body, uh, because their, their desire for these 10 congregations, their desire was to be faithfully Lutheran in their witness and in their teaching. So that was really, really exciting to see these church bodies uh, come to the GKLI. And, and then also what's great about this is watching the churches we're working with and the churches that we've partnered with grow up and start to do these things on their own, right? This is the goal, right? We don't want uh, all of these churches around the world dependent on us. We want them to be uh, grown congregations. And it's a delight to see these church bodies doing this, taking this initiative and working with other church bodies, helping and teaching them to be faithful as a consequence of the hard work that we've put in to help and encourage them. Simply beautiful. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. uh, to learn more and to, to follow what's happening, uh, certainly international.lcms.org. Other places, Pastor Askins, we can learn more? Sure. Um, I would encourage you, if you want to follow uh, Pastor Wood's website, theseaside.asia. So he hooked one of these crazy uh, web, uh, uh, URLs, not .com, not .org. It's just theseaside.asia. Do take a look at his website. You can learn more about the work there in Indonesia. Um, and then I'm trying to think where else. I mean, obviously, of course, my website, uh, askinsinasia.com. I would also encourage you to look at um, lcmsasia.fireside.fm. That's our website, uh, our podcast, where we have the LCMS Asia podcast. I do a podcast about every other week. Um, this week's was Pastor Wood, uh, and you can listen to him. He actually, they recently had a conference that he taught at and talked about the Ten Commandments um, and, and kind of instructed and guided them on the Ten Commandments. And then um, we are all out of is, time. We're all out of time. Pastor ah, Askins, shoot. thanks so much. The Reverend Roy Askins, Communications Manager, Asia Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour.